نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزير من اهلي اللهم فكهنا في الدين رب زدني علما اللهم إني أسألك علما نافيا رزقا طيبا وعملا متكبلا آمين ثم آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سورة أز زمر The surah was revealed in Makkah having 75 verses and eight stanzas and it is the 39th by the order of arrangement and it derives its name from the verses 71 and 73 in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned about the groups about the zumr and the period of revolution as the verse number 10 Allah says wa ardullahi alwasiya that shows that uh, this was sent down before the immigration to Habsha. And it was also, some people say that it was sent down in respect to the, the migration of Hazrat Jafar bin Abu Talib when he had ma- made up his mind to immigrate to Habsha. The main theme and the basic subject of the surah is that the entire surah is a most eloquent and an effective address which was given to some time before the immigration of Habsha. And this was an environment which was filled with persecution. And uh, the real aim of uh, the invitation of Prophet Sallallahu has been highlighted. And this aim was that uh, they should, the people should adopt Allah's service sincerely and they should not pollute Allah's worship with service of any other deity and thus presenting this these cardinal principles in different ways in the verses of Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained all these basic these basic concepts and belief in the oneness of Allah negation of the polytheism and belief in hereafter these cardinal principles are have been explained in different ways over and over again in the verses of in the verses of the surah the truth of tawhid and the excellent results of accepting it and the falsehood of shirk and the evil consequences following it they have been explained in a very forceful manner and the people exhorted to give up the wrong way of life and return towards the mercy of allah So uh, this is the basic uh, message which has been revealed in the surah in the verses of surah az-zumar and there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verses of surah az-zumar has also mentioned inviting the people towards the faith on oneness of Allah Allah has also mentioned how how forgiving and how merciful he will be to all those who return towards Allah Allahumma ja'alna minhum بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز الحكيم إنا أنزلنا إليك الكتاب بالحق فاعبد الله مخلص 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 له الدين ألا لله الدين الخالص الله سبحانه وتعالى says the revelation of Quran is from Allah the exalted in might and wise. Indeed, we have sent down to you the book in truth. So worship Allah being sincere to him in religion. The previous surah ends with the discussion and the importance of sincerity towards Allah. And this surah starts with the invitation of the sincere worship of Allah. Verse number three, 
Unquestionably, for Allah is the pure religion, and those who take protectors besides him say, we only worship them that they may bring us near to Allah in position. Indeed, Allah will judge between them concerning that over which they differ. Indeed, Allah does not guide he who is a liar and confirmed disbeliever. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that we do not need any source or they say that we do not need any source or any link for intercession to bring us close to Allah. As Allah himself, he says what? He says, that when my bondsmen, they ask you about me, tell them that I am very close. I am very near to them. And then the words of Prophet ﷺ further explains how near Allah is to the bondsmen. Prophet ﷺ told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to the bondsmen, is nearer to the bondsmen, more nearer to them than the wane of their neck. So when he is so close to all of us, we do not need any other source or any other link to intercess for his closeness for his intercession like they were the people of uh, the people of the previous prophets they had fabricated concepts they had fabricated uh, that hazrat isa alayhi salam was a son of allah they had said that hazrat uzair alayhi salam was a son of allah and the people of makkah said that the angels were the daughters of allah and they had fabricated all these false beliefs believing that they will be a source of closeness and an intercession for acceptance of our supplications towards allah there is nothing of the sort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to his bondsmen. And all we need to do is what? To return towards him with obedience and with submission. If Allah had intended to take a son, he could have chosen from what he creates, whatever he will. Exalted is he. He is Allah, the one, the prevailing. He created the heavens and the earth in truth. He wraps the night over the day and wraps the day over the night and has subjected the sun and the moon, each running its course for a specified term. Unquestionably, he is the exalted in might and the perpetual for forgiver. He created you from one soul, then he made from it its mate, and he produced from you from the grazing livestock eight mates. He created you in the wombs, he creates you in the wombs of your mothers, creation after creation within three darknesses. That is Allah, your Lord, to him belongs dominion. There is no deity except him. So how are you averted? If you disbelieve, indeed, Allah is free from need of you. He does not approve for his servants disbelieve. If you are grateful, he approves it for you. And no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another. Then to your Lord is your return. And he will inform you about what you used to do. Allahumma hasibna hisa bin yasira. Indeed, he is knowing of that which is within the breasts. And when adversity, uh, adversity touches man, he calls upon his Lord, turning to him alone. And then when he bestows on him a favor from himself, he forgets him whom he called upon before and he attributes to Allah equals to mislead people from his way. Say, enjoy your disbelief for a little. Indeed, you are of the companions of fire. All those who find deities with Allah is one who is devoutly obedient during the periods of night, prostrating and standing in prayer, fearing the hereafter and hoping for the mercy of his Lord. Is he like the one who does not? say are those who know equal to those who do not know only they will remember who are the people of understanding allahumma ja'alna minhum rabbi zidni ilma allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafian rizqan tayyiban wa amalan mutakabbala 
اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم منفعني بما علمتني وعلمني ما ينفعني وزدني علما say o oh my servants who have believed fear your lord for those who do good in this world is good and the earth of allah is spacious indeed the patient will be given their reward without account say indeed i have been commanded to worship allah being sincere to him in religion sincerity means what to worship allah just to worship allah worship allah for him and worship of allah and worship for allah sincerity is what is valued the most in any action of the bondsman that is why it has been said that a drop of action is better than an than an ocean of knowledge i repeat a drop of action is better than an ocean of knowledge and a drop of sincerity is better than an ocean of deeds allah subhanahu wa taala help us with sincerity of our intentions and sincerity in all the deeds we do we need to we need to please you and we need to obey you and i have been commanded to be the first among you of the muslims say indeed i fear if i should disobey my lord the punishment of a tremendous day say allah alone do i worship sincere to him in my religion so worship what you will besides him say indeed the losers are those are the ones who will lose themselves and their families on the day of resurrection unquestionably that is the manifest lost they will have canopies of fire above them and below them canopies but that allah threatens his servants oh my servants then fear me but those who have avoided tahud lest they worship it and turned back to allah for them are good tidings so give good tidings to my servants allahumma ja'alna minhum which servants who listen to the speech and follow the best of it those are the ones allah has guided and those are the people of understanding then is the one who has deserved the decree of punishment to be guided then can you save the one who is in the fire but those who have feared their lord for them are the chambers above the chambers built high beneath which rivers flow this is the promise of allah allah does not fail in his promise <coughs> allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is mentioning the promise to all those who fear allah اللهم اعطي نفسي تقواها اللهم اني اسالك الهدى والتقى والافاف والغنى two drops the two drops which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes the best is first is the drop of blood of a martyr which was shed at the time of his martyrdom and the second is the drop of tear the drop of tear from the from the eyes of a fearing bondsman which comes out of the tear of, of the eyes of the bondsman for the fear of allah this this drop of tear is so light by allah that it will lead to atonement of all the sins as has been promised by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that that when a bondsman cries out of the fear of allah and the tears roll down his face then if the tear happens to be smaller than the head of a fly than the face with which the tears touch the fire of the hell will be prohibited to touch that face allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been reported by bukhari that the seven people who will be allowed or permitted in the shade of the throne of allah on the day of judgment one of them will be the person who when he is all by himself in solitude he remembers allah and he cries out to the fear of allah 
Allahumma aati napsi taqwaha. Do you not see that Allah sends down the rain from the sky and makes it flow by springs and rivers in the earth? Then he produces thereby crops of varying colors. Then they are dry and you see them turn yellow and then he makes them scattered debris. Indeed, in that is a reminder for those of understanding. So is the one whose breast Allah has expanded to accept Islam and he is upon a light from his Lord, like the one whose heart rejects it. Then woe to those whose hearts are hardened against the remembrance of Allah. They are in manifest error. Rabbi Shrochli Sodri, Rabbi Shrochli Sodri, Rabbi Shrochli Sodri. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha, Rabbi aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husne ibadatik. Allah has sent down the best statement, a consistent book, wherein is recreation the skins shiver their form of those who fear their lord then their skins and their hearts relax at the remembrance of allah that is the guidance of allah by which he guides whom he wills and whom he and whom allah leaves astray for him there is no guidance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that those who fear their Lord and their skins and their hearts relax at the remembrance of Allah, Allah make us one of them. Rabbi a'inni ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Then is he who will shield his face, who will shield with his face the worst of the punishments of the day of resurrection, like the one secure from it, it will be said to the wrongdoers, taste what you used to earn. Those before them denied and punishment came upon them from where they did not proceed. So Allah made them taste the disgrace in the worldly life. But the punishment of hereafter is greater only if they knew. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatum wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar wa qina azab al-qabri wa qina azab al-hashri wa qina azab al-mizan. And we have certainly presented for people in this Quran for every kind of example that they might remember. It is an Arabic Quran without any deviance that they might become righteous. Allah presents an example, a slave owned by a quarreling partners and another belonging exclusively to one man. Are they equal in comparison? Praise be to Allah, but most of them do not know. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the example to make us understand the ease of following and obeying only one and one Allah, how easy it is, how easy it is to please Allah who is Shakiran Alima. Allah gives the example of an attendant. Allah gives the example of an attendant to many masters. He will be like continuously overworked. He will be overburdened. And still the masters won't be pleased. The masters would still stay displeased. On the contrary, if the attendant had just one master to obey, to please or to serve, the job is comparatively much easy. And the master will, also ple will be also pleased at the same time. So this is a message, an eye opener for all of the, of all of those who run around, all the people who run around making efforts, making efforts, striving, struggling to please their family, their friends, their colleagues, their relatives, their community, and their clan. In contrast, pleasing and obeying one Allah is the most easiest of all. And it is most easiest of all because Allah is all merciful and Allah is all shakiran alima. Indeed, you are to die. Indeed, they are to die. Then indeed, you on the day of resurrection before your Lord will dispute. So who is more unjust than the one who lies about Allah and denies the truth when it has come to him? Is there not in hell a residence for the disbelievers and the one who has brought the truth and they who believed in it 
those are the rightest rabbana innana amanna faghfir lana zunubana wa qina adhab an-nar they will have whatever they desire who the rightest they will have whatever they desire with their lord that is the reward of the doers of good that allah may remove from them the worst of what they did and reward them their due for the best of what they used to do is not allah sufficient for his servants allah asks is not allah sufficient for his servants sufficient for what sufficient for sufficient for their obedience for their submission for their worships for remembrance for gratitude for them to supplicate for them to ask for them to seek repentance is not allah sufficient for his servants and yet they threaten you with those they worship other than him and whoever allah leaves astray for him there is no guide allahumma ihdina siratal mustaqim and whoever allah guides for him there is no misleader allahumma ihdina siratal mustaqim is not allah exalted in might and owner of retribution and if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth they would surely say allah say then have you considered what you invoke besides allah if allah intended me harm are they removers of his harm or if he intended intended me mercy are they withholders of his mercy say sufficient for me is allah upon him alone i rely the wise the rely the wise reliers say oh my people work according to your position for indeed i am working and you are going to know to whom will come a torment disgracing him or whom will descend an enduring punishment indeed we send down to you the book for people in truth so whoever is guided it is for the benefit of his soul and whoever goes astray goes astray to his detriment and you are not a manager over them verse 42 allah takes the souls at the time of their death and those that do not die he takes them during their sleep then he keeps those for which he has decreed death and releases the other for a specified term indeed in that are signs for people who give thought now here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about two conditions of sleep and death sleep has been called as the sister of death what does that mean and what do we understand from this verse remember the soul in the body the soul in our bodies is responsible for the life of the body and they, there are two <clears throat> there are two components of the soul what happens during the sleep is that one component of the soul is taken out of the body and the other stays behind this part of the component of the soul which stays behind in the body while this while the sleep is what is responsible for all the subconscious mind working and all the subconscious Uh, activities and of the body being carried on and all the autonomic organs continue working despite the person sleeping so while the person is sleeping the person is not aware of the environment is not seeing is not hearing is not talking is not walking is not eating is not drinking is just lie lying like a dead person because one of the components of the soul has been taken away but since the second component of the soul is still residing within the bodies so the subconscious mind operates and just keeps on working and this subconscious mind sends the orders to the autonomic systems of the body and all the autonomic organs like the heart the lung the liver the kidneys and all the gut and all the systems of the body keeps on working and the person stays alive this is a state of sleep now what happens when the person wakes up at the time of waking up the component of the soul which had left the body it enters back it is returned and so the person wakes up and gets up what happens at the time of death 
when the death is attended by the order of Allah, the death angel takes out both the components of the soul. And this is death, and this is the death of the soulless body. That is why. That is why when we are going to sleep, we have been taught to recite the supplication taught by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of waking and at the time of sleeping. At the time of sleeping, what do we recite? Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. Allah with your name. In your name, we are going to die and we are going to live. So we are reciting what? That we are trying to realize and we are mentioning before sleep that we are going to enter into a state of like into a state of sleep in into a state of half death and you know what despite experiencing daily every night daily experiencing half of a fraction of death sleep a condition similar to half of death we experience it every night but we still, we still tend to forget the time of our death and we still seem to forget and seem to fail to prepare for the life after death. How insolent, how forgetless, how forgetful and how foolish do people behave. And then in the morning when we get up, we get up from our sleep we say what? Alhamdulillahi lazi ahyana badama amatina wa ilayhi nashur. That all praise to Allah who has given us life after death. So this is what we are acknowledging and we are remembering and we are revising. That we, after this half state of death, we have been given and granted and blessed with life. And this, the chances of life. But despite all that, we forget that there will be a day soon when they will be coming back, no coming back to life, eternal abode. The eternal abode, the, the travel of the eternal life hereafter will start. Allahumma aini ala humaratil maut wa saqaratil maut. Allahumma hasibna hisa bin yasira. Or have they taken other than Allah as intercessor say, even though they do not possess, they do not possess power or anything, nor do they reason. Say to Allah belongs the right to allow intercession entirely. To him belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. And then to him you will be returned. And when Allah is mentioned unknown, the hearts of those who do not believe in hereafter shrink with aversion. But when those but when those worshipped other than him are mentioned, immediately they rejoice. Rabbi Shrahli Sodri wa Yasirli Amri Wahul Uqdatam Milisani. Say, O Allah, creator of the heavens and the earth, knower of the unseen and the witness, you will judge between your servants concerning that over which they used to differ. And if those who did wrong had all that is in the earth entirely, and like of it, with it, they would attempt to ransom themselves thereby from the worst of the punishments on the day of resurrection, and there will appear to them from Allah that which they had not taken into account. And there will appear to them the evils they had earned, and they will be enveloped by what they used to ridicule. And when adversity touches man, he calls upon us. Then when we bestow on him a favor from us, he says, I have only been given it because of my knowledge. Rather, it is a trial, but most of them do not know. Those before them had already said it, but they were not availed by what they used to earn. And the evil consequence of what they earned struck them. And those who have wronged of these people will be afflicted by the evil consequences of what they earned, and they will not cause failure. Rabbana zolamna anfusana wa illam tafir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al khasirin. And do they not know that Allah extends provisions for whom He wills and restricts it? Indeed, in that are signs for the people who believe. 
wonderful and beautiful promise by Allah, the Rahman, the Rahim, the merciful sustainer of the worlds. Allah says, O oh my servants, قُلْ يَا إِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ O oh my servants who have transgressed against themselves by sinning, do not despair. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Why? Because indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, it is He who is the forgiving, the merciful. For seeking His mercy, you need to do what? For getting an atonement of all the sins, all what you need to do is return in repentance to your Lord. And then do what? Submit to him before the punishment come on, comes upon you. Then you will not be held. So in these two verses, an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his forgiveness is being mentioned. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making a declaration Allah is proclaiming and making a declaration and it seems as if his mercy, his mercy is at the highest level. His mercy is at its peak. He is announcing that, oh people, all those people who have wronged himself. Remember in this verse, Allah is not just addressing his obedience, his obedient bondsmen. He is not just addressing or announcing to his sincere servants to the scholars, to the worshippers, or to those who have believed. Allah is addressing all the people. Allah is addressing all. Allah is saying, you think you have gathered? You have gathered an immense amount of filth of sins? Allah is addressing all those who have disbelieved. Allah is addressing all those who are disobedient. Allah is addressing the hypocrites. Allah is addressing the transgressors and is telling them not to despair. Do not lose hope. Why? Why? Because the one who is the ghafoor, who is the ghafir, who is the merciful, he will forgive you. He will forgive all of you. He will forgive everyone. He will forgive every sin. He will forgive all of the sins of all of the people. He will pardon all the sins of all the people. All the sins he will pardon. All what they need to do is anibu. Anibu, return. Where? Anibu ila rabbikum. Return towards their Lord. And then do what? Aslimu lahu. Submit to him. Surrender to him. And do not do what? Do all this in hurry. Do not delay. Repent and return to your Lord seeking forgiveness before your time goes out. Remember the attribute of Allah which is mentioned the most in Quran, his attribute of forgiveness. Al-Ghafir, Al-Ghafur, Ghafir al-Zam, Qabil al-Tawb, Afuv al-Qadir. These are the attributes which have been mentioned to encourage the bondsmen to seek forgiveness. These are the attributes of Allah mentioned the most in Quran. Seeking forgiveness is such a light deed by Allah that he promises forgiveness for all who return seeking forgiveness. Until when will he forgive? Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Tirimsi and Ibn Majah that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Inna Allah yuqbal at-tawbat al-abdi ma lam yughur That there is no doubt, indeed, for sure, that the repentance of his bondsman, Allah accepts it till the last breath before death. That is why, that is exactly why 
in verse 31 of Surah Toba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered all of us, Tubu ilallahi jamiya ayyuhal mu'minun la'allakum tuflihun. That O oh, believers, all of you, all of you, O oh, believers, you repent towards Allah, all of you collectively, so that you might be successful. Successful where? <coughs> Hereafter and in this world also. In Surah Tahrim, verse number eight, Allah says, Repent how? Ya yuhallazina amanu tubu illallah tawbatun nusu. That, oh, you believers, you repent towards Allah, you seek forgiveness towards Allah. How? Tawbatun nusu. And what do we mean by tawbatun nusu? Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who, when he was asked, he explained that tawbatun nusu means seeking repentance or asking forgiveness in a way that after toba, committing the sin is set aside, one does not even think about it. One does not even think or imagine about committing the sin. Allah loves those, as Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, in Allah yuhibbu tawwabina wa yuhibbul mutatwakhirin. Allah loves all those who's, who want, who try to stay pure and who seek, who seek forgiveness and who repent towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the contrary, Allah warns in Quran, Those who do not repent, those who do not return towards Allah, after committing sins, they do not return towards Allah seeking forgiveness. These are those who are the wrongdoers. They are wronging themselves. Why? Very obviously, because he is a wrongdoer. He has wronged himself. Allah, Allah Almighty has given such a remarkable bumper offer of pardoning all the sins, but he fails to avail of the offer. How foolish he is being. How, how badly he is wronging himself. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam tafir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al khasirin. And that is why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has advised, Tubu ilallah, repent, seek forgiveness towards Allah. Fa inni tubu ilallah fi kulli yawmin mi'ata marra. And in another tradition, he said, Sabarina marra. O people, you seek forgiveness towards him, for I, I repent and I seek forgiveness in a day, 100 times or 70 times. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Musnad Ahmad and Ibn Majah that when a bondsman sins, a black spot appears on his heart. But when he seeks forgiveness, it is washed off, it clears away. But if a person goes on committing sins and does not seek forgiveness, then the whole heart becomes black. And then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the words, Allah bal ra'na ala qulubihim. That is, the hearts, they get rusted and they get corroded. And these are the hearts for which Allah has mentioned in Quran, So the hearts of the people who go on sinning, the sinners who go on sinning, but they do not repent and they do not seek repentance and forgiveness for their sins, then there are the hearts who, who get corroded Theirs are the hearts who get stamped and theirs are the heart who get sealed and they stay away from faith and belief in their hearts. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, he was shown some people with shining white faces and he asked whom they were. He was told that these were the persons who had <clears throat> refrained from all forms of sins. And then he saw people who had spots, black spots on their faces but he saw that they got down. <clears throat> he saw that they got down, descended in a river, and they took a dip and they came out. And they came out with shiny, clear, white faces. He was told that these were the people who had committed sins, but they had seeked forgiveness. So their faces had become shiny white also. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who has reported in Ibn Majah. And the Rimzi that Prophet has explained the situation 
and truth. He said, Kullu bani adma khattan, khayrul khata'een at-tawwaboon. That all the, all the sons of Adam alayhi salam, they are but bound to err. And they will commit sins. But the best of those who err and the best of sinners are those who repent, who seek forgiveness for their sins. And when a person, a bondsman, seeks forgiveness, what happens is, how does, how does this cause atonement of all the sins? Hazrat Abdullah bin Masood, Rasiyallahu ta'ala, and who reports in a tradition that Prophet Sallallahu said, At-taibu min al-zambi kama la zamba lahu. The person who seeks forgiveness from his sins is the one like is, is like the one for whom no sins are left at all. Remember, seeking forgiveness and repenting is the trait of the inmates of Jannah. Surah, <coughs> Surah Al Imran, verse 135, Allah explains the traits of inmates of Jannah is. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ زَوَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا لِذَنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُ الذَّنُوبُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ The people of the Jannah, the people of the paradise will be those whom when they commit any sin or immoral character or immoral traits, they remember Allah or they wrong themselves, they remember Allah. And when they remember Allah, what do they do? They repent, they seek forgiveness. Why? Because they know that there's no other, no other being other than Allah who is all seeking of forgiveness. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Tirimdi and Abu Dawood that a person who repents with sincerity, even if he seeks forgiveness 70 times in a day, you know why I'm telling all this is that when we seek forgiveness and then after some times, if we are habitual to a sin and we are very much used to committing a sin in our daily lives and then we, we seek forgiveness and then because of being habitual, we commit it again and then we seek forgiveness and then we commit again. After some times, shaitan comes, to up, comes up to us and suggests that you have like made out a fun of seeking forgiveness what will allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say what he'll what will he say aren't you ashamed of what you are doing so you might as well stop stop seeking forgiveness you're trying to make a fun out of all this seeking forgiveness and repenting no we do not need to stop seeking forgiveness and repenting because prophet Wasallam said that a person repenting with sincerity even if he seeks forgiveness 70 times a day his name will be written in the list of those who did not insist. And not insisting is again a trait of the inmates of Jannah. That knowing that they have sinned, that knowing that they have disobeyed Allah, they do not cover up. They did not justify their wrongdoings and their sins, but they do what? They repent and seek forgiveness. In Surah Hijr, Verse number 49 and verse number 49 and 50, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announces, Nabbi ibadi anni anal ghafuru rahim wa inna azabi lahu al azabul alim. That you inform, you give information, O my servants, give them the information to all my servants and all my bondsmen that I am all forgiving and I am all merciful. But there's no doubt, absolutely no doubt, that there my torments will also be very, very painful and very humiliating. So to save yourselves, avail of the announcement of the forgiver of all the sins. Prophet ﷺ has told all of us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, oh, my servants, you did not expect from me Oh, my servants, you did not ex expect forgiveness from me if, if your sins had reached from earth to the heavens and you would have asked forgiveness, I would have forgiven you. And if you would have come with the sins of all the sinners of the world together, only, only you yourself, and you would have asked forgiveness, I would have forgiven you. And then... Prophet 
told all of us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the bondsman who believes that I can and I will forgive, I forgive him. Now I ask all of you, do we believe that he is Ghafoor? Do we know that he is Ghafar? Do we understand that he is Ghafiru Zam? Is it our faith that he is Qabilu Tawb? And do we understand that he is Afuvan Kadir? Yes, we know that. We believe that from the core of our hearts. Then seek forgiveness. Seek forgiveness. Because Prophet ﷺ has promised that who makes seeking forgiveness his habit, making istighfar, making seeking forgiveness his habits, then Allah gives contentment to his soul, gives him a peace of mind, eases out all the hardships and the crises of his life, and he provides for him sustenance from where he doesn't hope or expect. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al Remember, seeking forgiveness is a, man, is a mannerism of the prophets. It is a mannerism of the messengers of Allah. Adam alayhi salam, when he, when he committed a folly, he, he pleased his rub by seeking forgiveness, by saying what? Rabbana, zolamna, anfusana, wa illam taghfir lana, wa tarhamna, lanakunanna min al khasirin. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, he said what? Inni zolam tu nafsi faghfir li. When he committed an accidental murder, he accepted, he repented, and he seeked forgiveness. Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, when he was in the belly of the fish, he said what? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min zwalimin. I am of the wrongdoers. And there are some supplications which have been taught to all of us for seeking forgiveness in the Quran and by the words of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbih fir warham wa anta khayru rahimin. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Allahumma khfirli. Allahumma innaka afuvan kareeman tuhibbul affa faqpuanna. 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 Allahumma khfir lana walil mu'minina wal mu'minat. Wal muslimina wal muslimat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us remember and help us frequently recite this supplication and help us be one of those who very frequently repent and seek forgiveness. Allah says, follow the best of what was revealed to you from your Lord before the punishment comes upon you suddenly and while you do not perceive, lest a soul should say, oh, how great is my regret over what I neglected in regard to Allah and that I was among the mockers. Or lest it say, if only Allah had guided me, I would have been among the righteous. Or lest it says that when it sees the punishment, if only I had another turn so I could be among the doers of good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us all of those who do not come across all these regrets on the day of judgment. But yes, there had come to you my verses, but you denied them and you were arrogant and you were among the disbelievers. And on the day of resurrection, you will see those who lied about Allah with their faces blackened. Is there not in hell a residence for the arrogance? And Allah will save those who feared him by their attainment. No evil will touch them, nor will they be grieved. Allah is the creator of all the things. He is over all things disposer of affairs. To him belongs the keys of the heavens and the earth. And they who disbelieve in the verses of Allah, it is those who are the losers. Say, is it other than Allah that you order me to worship, O ignorant ones? And it is already revealed to you that those before you, that if you should associate anything with Allah, your work will surely become worthless and you would surely be among the losers. Rather, worship only Allah and be among the grateful. And have not appraised Allah with two appraisal. 
they have not appraised Allah with the true appraisal, while the earth entirely will be within one grip on the day of resurrection, and the hills will be folded in his right hand. Exalted is he, and high above what they associate with him. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wala ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And the horn will be blown, and whoever is in the heavens, and whoever is on the earth will fall dead except whom Allah wills then it will be blown again and at once they will be standing looking on and the earth will shine with the light of its Lord and the record of the deeds will be placed Allahumma hasibna hisab yasira and the prophets and the witnesses will be brought and it will be judged between them in truth and they will not be wronged and every soul will be fully compensated for what it did and he is most knowing of what they do and those who disobey disbelieved will be driven to hell in groups this is from where the surah gets its name and when they reach it its gates are opened and its keepers will say did they not come to you messengers from yourselves reciting to you the verses of your lord and warning you of the meetings of this day they will say, yes, but the words of punishment has come into effect upon the disbelievers. So this is a dialogue between the inmates of the hell when they will enter and the angels, angels of the hell fire who will be surprised and they will they will just not be able to understand and they will be think they will be thinking that it will be like next to impossible that if the pe people had received warnings, from the warners and from the messengers, they still end up landing in the hell. To them, it will be said, enter the gates of hell to abide eternally therein. Wretched is the residence of the arrogance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us strive and stay in this life as your humble servants. But those who feared their lords will be driven to the paradise in groups until when they reach it, while its gates have been opened, seven gates of Jahannam and eight gates of Jannah. Its gates have been opened and its keepers will say, Salamun alaykum toibatum fadquluha, peace be upon you. You have become pure, so enter to it, abide eternally therein. They will enter and they will say, Alhamdulillah, praise to Allah who has fulfilled for us his promise and made us inherit the earth, which earth? The earth of Jannah. So we may settle in paradise wherever we will will. And excellent is the reward of the righteous workers. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. And you will see the angels surrounding the throne we know that before the day of judgment, the angels of the throne have been mentioned to be four in number in Quran and Hadith. But on the day of judgment, the number has been explained to increase to eight. So the angels surrounding the throne, exalting Allah with praise of their Lord, and it will be judged between them in truth. And it will be said, all praise to Allah. Lord of the worlds. Subhanallah, he will be hamdihi. Subhanallah, he'll azim. Subhanallah, he will be hamdihi. Subhanallah, he'll azim. Subhanallah, he will be hamdihi. Subhanallah, he'll azim. Frequently should we remember Allah with these glorifying verses, which, were, which have been taught to us by hadith, are the verses which the angels glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has promised all of us that whoever glorifies Allah hundred times with these verses, then all sins, even if they come up to the forms of the water on the oceans, then the sins will be forgiven and pardoned. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. These are the words for which Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given the good news that he saw a tree and the tree in the winter, in the winter morning, all the leaves were dried and he held and he shook the tree leaves with his staff and the trees fell. And he said, 
that the that the sins of a believer are a bondsman they shed when he says subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar when he says this once Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi adada khulqihi wa rizwa nafsihi wa zinata arshihi wa midada kalimatihi. Rabbana la tuzih qulubana baada iz hadaitana wa khablana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahab. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ameen summa ameen.